Hi, and welcome everybody. This is the Poster Drop episode number, I think nine it is already. So many episodes since the redesign because we had a redesign and uh, this is a little special episode. We have posters, I can tell you that, but we will talk a lot about anime here. And uh, yeah, I'd like to welcome uh, Stefan Rikelis and uh, he is uh, also a German and uh, we will talk to you obviously in English so you can all have fun with this one. And he is the author of this beautiful book. Um, anime architecture and uh, yeah we will talk about the book and there's a gallery um, uh, exhibition right now until September and uh, yeah this is about obviously part of the books and this is also part where you can get some prints and uh, yeah Stefan welcome thank you very much Tom for inviting me to your great podcast yeah thank you for coming it's it's a real pleasure and um i had this book and uh, some of my friends because like i ha have a couple of different art books and i like to show them around and i and when i do like instagram lives and stuff and people are always like oh books books are so good because they have so much art in it and uh, so much wonderful things that you cannot own if you don't have all the wall space in the world <laughs> and uh, so yeah books make up a good um a, a good replacement for that but um, yeah, let's let's talk about you first before we come to the book, because uh, how did you get into this? So how, uh, wh where are you coming from? Where I'm coming from? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I come from the south of Germany and I went to Berlin. And from Berlin, um, I had a first job at the media art festival. And yeah. that's actually my background. It's in the arts and technologically based arts. And that led me to Tokyo in 2005. Oh, that's nice. And that was the first encounter with Japan, which hooked me kind of. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to go back and I needed a reason because you need something to do. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I had a colleague who hired me as a research assistant for a project about anime okay and that's how i entered this world um watching a lot of movies and visiting the studios oh, that's awesome of the creators so it's kind of a backdoor entrance because actually i watched many of the movies i'm discussing now after i have met the artists that was just because I was like, you know, running with my colleague. Mm -hmm. But isn't it interesting, yeah. like uh, having like looking at this uh, this way, because sometimes I feel like when I watch movies, when I have some background information, like from the director or from the actors and, so, uh, and something like that, I always feel a deeper connection and it makes even it makes the movie better in a certain way. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's what I discovered also. And um the in most interesting aspect for me was that I had the preconception that anime is something for kids. Mm -hmm. you know, I think many people in the West have this. Then I encountered the artists. They were at that time that like that's already 15 years ago. <laughs> they were around 50 years old. Mm -hmm. And they were still drawing passionately these manga ega mm. the manga films yeah and it's clear that i mean today it's obvious or to anybody who draws that you need an adult mind to draw a children's book but for me that was kind of a paradox situation because i thought hmm okay so watch you watch these things as a teen and then these are like daddies drawing that stuff Mm. And they, but they were so young at heart and so inspiring. So I kept researching their work and yeah, kind of from there it all started because I, I understood, okay, these guys are doing the backgrounds. No, I met the background artists mm. and yeah, that's the whole beginning of the story. Yeah. Uh, that sounds really interesting. And uh, yeah, quick question here. What, what's your favorite anime movie then? You have one? <laughs> Tough question, yeah. I know, but... <laughs> my my favorite is Mononoke Hime, oh, Princess yeah. Mononoke. Yeah, I go, I go along um, with that. It's also my, one of my favorites. Yeah, it's 
basically it's just one sequence is this forest sequence mm. when the forest god this big deer comes into this little pond in the forest and that's just such an amazing place mm. sense of place and sense of like spiritual encounter yeah that's my favorite sequence i think Awesome. That's uh, that's really that's yeah. I mean, that's a really good choice. I really love Mono OK. It's one of my favorites as well. I have uh, I have a print. Like I, I'll I'll show you later. I have a print and it's in a kitchen because my, my girlfriend really loves uh, Ghibli stuff. And uh, yeah, so we have a dedicated Ghibli wall in the kitchen where she spends uh, some time. And uh, if she's not in the office, she <laughs> she's over in the kitchen working at the <laughs> desk there. And yeah, so she wants to be with the good stuff. <laughs> yeah, great. Um, but yeah, so um, you did you make this your living? Is this your um, working with anime? Is it your uh, main job, or what? What do you do actually for a living? Yeah, this is not. I mean, since uh, basically since two thousand eleven, I'm producing exhibitions mm -hmm. and books. Yeah like books is a bit far-fetched it's two books mm -hmm. so far um but yeah we had a lot of exhibitions touring of the original artwork of some well-known films mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and because anime is a global phenomenon my business is also global so yeah since 2011 we find venues and places to present these things and tour around like the last two years have been obviously a bit uh, dry mm -hmm. but yeah we had this new book coming out and so it's going well that's awesome and uh yeah looking uh, like speaking about the book we have uh some images here I, uh, again i'll pull that up for you guys so you can see this is this is the book that i just um pulled up here and if you look inside it has uh didn't it say it on like said somewhere how many how many images are in there i think i read ah uh, yeah they counted it i think 300 something yeah 328 maybe? or something like that yeah 386 386 yeah 386 exactly so yeah <laughs> so there's a lot of images yeah. in there from from the yeah, anime but board. some are very small as you can see here no, hey it's that's still nothing against also. that but yeah. um yeah. so um Taking you, you took the book and basically um, made some of the uh, images in the book uh, available as prints. So this is your entry into the print world. Um, for example, we have um, this Akira background of Neo Tokyo. Um, and yeah, what what is like? How did you decide uh, first of all? on which backgrounds that came in here and uh, how did you decide which like I mean you had to like from 386 illustrations uh, you had to pick like how many how many are there in the exhibition like okay so the now we have an exhibition about Akira artwork only okay so that's like just Akira and in this exhibition we have 59 original artwork that's it that's amazing yeah um so okay your question uh, is very brief but <laughs> the answer is quite long sure go ahead go ahead um, <laughs> this, this so, is your time to shine uh, yeah um this book is based on a previous book that's called proto anime cut archive mm -hmm. I, i'll show it here it's this one yeah and this was made in 2010 as an exhibition catalog. Ah, in this okay. book, we have Ghost in the Shell, Pet Labor, Metropolis, these kind of movies. Mm -hmm. And we made this book, or we were able to make this book because we had the original artwork at hand. Oh, so okay. we did scans of the originals in a much better quality than what existed until then. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm which was a, is a quite strange if you think about the popularity of Ghost in the Shell, for yeah. example. Isn't it the but anniversary? Had... Was it last year or the anniversary just mm. came up? Didn't it? Of Ghost in the Shell, yeah. It was released in 95. Oh, so yeah. 
it's we have a bit more three yeah years, three years more maybe. but i thought it was like yeah maybe it was a couple a couple days back or did they have a remaster or something like that i think they did a remaster yeah that, that's i think that's a, now 4k remaster yeah, yeah. my so. my friend uh maxi funk orlando arsina he did uh, the us uh, uh 4k blu-ray um cover design things like that so that turned out really beautiful and another friend matt ferguson did uh the version for the for i think for I don't know if Studio Canal has it or who has the rights, but uh, yeah, he did it for the UK market. Really? Wow. So actually, that one of my I'm most proud of is that in the 4K release of the US 4K mm -hmm. version, I have a 10 minute feature nice. explaining the backgrounds. Awesome. That's great. So yeah. That's really an honor, you know. Yeah. I've been working with these movies and the artists for a very long time, and um, to be on the official release, yeah, I was really happy about That's that. That's amazing, yeah. I bet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, okay, so um, the basically my books are based on the artwork I have access to from the artists. Mm -hmm. So. Every piece that you find in the anime architecture book exists on paper, and I also know where it is. That was the reason we could make this book. Mm -hmm. There is no like, um, like I'm not based on data, no, I'm a paper guy, yeah. So it always goes hand in hand to produce an exhibition and a book. A uh, quick like question that, here, that's, you know, just mm -hmm. do you also have is it is that the, the sketches are they also in hand or is it just the, the final product? No, like, okay, so this first image here actually is a digital image. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's just a digital. But the second one, the sketch is a paper. Yeah, yeah. this is based on paper. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and you have that basically in hand, or is that, or is it? At the studios, oh, awesome. at the artist's That's studio. Right. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's the final product, as you yeah. can see, people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, continue, please. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, so now we have like an exhibition of this first chapter which is about akira mm -hmm. if you scroll a bit further yeah and um yeah how to decide i mean we have these pieces and i just thought um <laughs> we need prints which are the best uh, motives no mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really hard to decide sometimes because almost everything looks great. <laughs> Indeed, um, that's that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One uh, criteria was that I wanted to have the print signed, mm -hmm. so the artist needed to be alive and accessible. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Mm, which is both not the case with some of these pieces. And, but for example, these two mm -hmm. here, which you have here in the middle, I will release these as posters yeah. because the left one well, is done bigger. by, yeah, this is painted by the art director of Akira, Mizutani-san, and the other one is painted by Ono Hiroshi, a very established art director himself. Mm -hmm. He was at that time working with Mizutani as a staff. Mm -hmm. But these are like the two main uh, artists of the Akira artwork. Mm -hmm. um, quick question here, um, since you are very deep into this, I guess how um, how do you or how do you think they maintain the same kind of style when it comes to the images? Because they have to like an over like the the, the theme has to be obviously the same, but in terms of style, because a movie would look very weird or like an anime would look very weird if you have uh, different, totally different styles. But how do these artists work together or who does, is it just the coloring they do or is it basically from sketch to final piece? Mm. Yeah, that's a very good question. It's actually one of my deepest research questions because <laughs> What I'm interested in is exactly the point where we can understand which aspects of a certain scene are an artist's signature style mm -hmm. and what is superimposed by an art director. Mm -hmm. So 
in hand-drawn animation, you have a quite large range of artistic freedom. Mm. That, I think that's very different from digital work today. Yeah. So um, to explain this, let's go to a different, because in the book, I actually have a page about this, okay. um, this thing. And the page number is, uh, just a second, page number is 120. It's about Ghost in the Shell. 120, let's see, where does it start? Ah, okay. So in the PDF, it's probably around page sixty because ah, okay, okay. it's double double pages here. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, here the lower page here. This one down. Yeah, yeah, this one. Okay. So this shows the same scene mm -hmm. for Ghost in the Shell, and painted by two different artists. Mm -hmm. If you if you scroll a page back, this one. You see, yeah. This so inspiration, the, yeah. This, no, nope. that's the okay. like the left side is a production background, of course, in the shell. Okay. That shows a market area. Uh -huh. The right side are photographs taken for inspiration. Yeah. And so the market, which you see here from top, if you scroll down, then we see the ales of the market, and there's a chasing scene. Mm -hmm. I remember, yeah. Here. And um. So if you look, for example, at the buildings in the background, mm -hmm. like at the very far of the ale, yeah. that should and be here. the same building, no? Should, should have been, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it should be the same building or it is meant to be the same building, but you can see that it's rendered completely differently. Yeah. Like the left side is done by the art director of the movie, Hiromasa Ogura. It's very flat. It's very cool. Mm -hmm. It's quite abstract. If you zoom in a bit closer, you you could see that it's really there's not too much going on. He's a really he's a master of omitting things. Like what do you really need? Mm. You know? And if you go to the right side, you can see that Kusamori. Yeah, tons of details there in the. He is really a detail guy. He he's obsessed with detail. So yeah, actually, like the like the what I have here as a background here. Yeah. On my in my studio, this is this painting here is painted by Kusamori, which you see on the right side. I I I've, I'd have to pull the focus a bit. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll make it a little bit bigger so people to see. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Delay. We get it. We get it. We get it. We got you. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, here. So that's the detail. And. Kusamori, who, who did the right side of Ghost in the Shell here, he painted this also. This is a this is a background for Metropolis. Yeah. So this is actually a, a reproduction here, but it's one-to-one -one reproduction. Mm -hmm. It's one of our like high grade prints. Okay. Just using it as a backdrop. But yeah, you can see from this sequence in Ghost in the Shell mm -hmm. that there's a huge um like visual gap between these two pieces mm. but because the action is very fast and there are characters in the foreground and you only see this background for a second yeah like maybe two seconds <laughs> you won't realize that it's the, very different yeah the so, level of detail as well right uh, you you yeah kind of gonna grasp that exactly so the what i really enjoy about my work with the background artists mm -hmm. is that I can look at these things for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Lucky you. Not just like on the screen. Just have a really in-depth research time. And then you can figure out these like individual marks that the artists left in the mm -hmm. productions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let me ask you this then. Um, since you have the time and it is all um, very well done, um, what, like, is, is there a certain level of, um, when you research these, is there a certain level of, um, like s not scientific research, but sociopolitic research or anything you are doing? Yeah. It, um, you've, just, yeah, you you just focused on your eye. <laughs> yeah. I need to refocus my eye. Uh, yeah. <sighs> There we go. So there I'm go. An, I'm researching this from an art historical perspective. Okay. 
And art history always implies sociological and political mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. conditions. Yeah, so I'm I'm doing quite a lot of research about the um, production conditions mm -hmm. and the political and social like elements that play into the movies. Yeah. yeah, that's that's my main area of interest. Okay, and that's also how I decided on the theme mm -hmm. of this whole thing. No sci-fi yes speaking of that because i, I kind of like went a little bit ahead before we recorded and asked that kind of question why is it only why did you pick only sci-fi movies and as you said i mean you love princess mononoke why not the beautiful japanese uh, landscape yeah so the landscape thing we i hope to do soon mm, sci-fi movies have a very strong relation to the world building aspect mm -hmm. or the world building is very important to science fiction productions. Yeah, not only, that I mean, means I love world building. That, uh, yeah, so that means that the art department has a much more demanding task in science fiction movies than you know, if you take uh, like sports, anime or romance mm -hmm. things, because you need a concise and believable world to place the story in. This also means that the art directors who create that kind of stuff need to have a special ability to achieve this level of believability mm -hmm. or to achieve the dispense of disbelief, no suspense yeah. of disbelief. Um, yeah, so in all science fiction, the backgrounds are always very important. Mm. Um, that's why. And I, because I'm working with the painter in painting department. Um, why not landscape? Why not Ghibli? And because that's a different chapter and you can't combine both in one book. Oh, yeah, obviously. obviously. <laughs> it's just, you know, selection criteria. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, Ghibli is hard to get. I, I mean, these things here, which we have here, are not so easy to get. But Ghibli is a completely different story. <laughs> you know, but I mean, that's... I, step by step. I love the landscape, but I think like the level of detail and um inspiration in terms of what we are not seeing goes ahead goes in hand with uh, sci-fi and fantasy as, as well because when you look at um like when i was younger when i was like i don't know 12 13 or whatever i read like berserk i, I read animes and stuff like that first especially when you have the medieval ones uh like the medieval themes they always go like super crazy and I wondered, in terms of architecture, is, is that because Western architecture and how castles are built and stuff like that um, is, is totally different from what Japanese castles and things look like? And this this comes from and having this super cool imagination of the whole thing. Is, is, is that your um, perspective as well? Or, how, or can you comment on that? Mm. <laughs> yeah. The... <laughs> It's really the, <coughs> I mean, the castle, the castle is Neuschwanstein. Yeah, yeah. It's the, the castle for Walt Disney and it's the castle for Hayao Miyazaki. Mm. And um, so, so it's actually a German, a Bavarian castle. Yeah, yeah. Um, Then you have, of course, Japanese castles in Kyoto and so. But the style everybody is in, Yeah, of course. You know, everybody likes to play with exotism, mm -hmm. I think. J Japanese as well as uh, Westerners. The other way around, yeah. So for the Japanese audience to present a, like European style architecture, has in itself a certain appeal mm. you know heidi was is not a it was not by chance that it was produced in japan mm -hmm. the attraction from japan to a uh, alps scenery is very high yeah. it's the same attraction level that we have 
for a Japanese garden or you know Japanese architecture. Mm-hmm. It you. You want to see it, you want to experience it, so you invest time and energy to create these things. Um, yeah. The If you go into the details of how these architectures or cities of the sci-fi movies were built, mm-hmm. it's you immediately understand that none of these cities was created from scratch. Every city is built on another one and on another one and on another one. So there are really long lines of influences and heritage. So in this book, it's Blade Runner, for example, is the movie, no? Everything yeah, yeah. here, in this book is is against or with Blade Runner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you cannot... You cannot it's, delete it. But then Blade Runner depends on a very large amount of references itself. And mm. yeah, you can pinpoint. I, I have to say, I'm a, uh, I'm a big fan of Liam Wong and his photography. And uh, yeah, this mm. is very Blade Runner-esque. And I, I see also the, 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 the photos he takes that reminds me a lot of the sci-fi architecture from uh, other animes. And I think he was inspired as well by that uh, because uh, his, his photos were uh, taken after the movies came out and yeah so that's really interesting to see how like f- from different fields everything is influenced uh by each other and uh, how we uh, came together with that so that's awesome yeah 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 i heard that he visited our exhibition like y- he, last week he did like here in yeah. berlin no i i haven't met him but you know in berlin he's in berlin i didn't know well, I, I heard it. I don't know. I, oh. I haven't met him, but I I'm standing. Understood. I'm standing. I want to I want to meet him. <laughs> uh, meet him. <laughs> yeah, I would have loved to, but I w- was not able. Yeah, he's he's a great artist and very much working with this heritage. Hmm. So, yeah, he's also re- he published the same book in the volume imprint. Yeah, like just well, anime architecture was published. There was his book there. Uh-huh. Yeah, so we have a very similar line of research, awesome. and he's a great artist building on these these other works. You know. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Speaking of the exhibition again, um, you uh, can you tell us until when it is in Berlin exactly, and where to find it? So just just we yeah, put it out there. <laughs> We're gonna plug it again it's later. Up. <laughs> until September 4 at the Museum for Architectural Drawing in Mm -hmm. Berlin Prenzlauer Berg. Yeah. It's a very tiny place and dedicated to hand-drawn architecture. So usually they have drawings of architectures that are built or, Mm -hmm. you know, invented by architects. But in this case, they decided it would be interesting to have an exhibition about fictional cities. That's yeah. that's really interesting uh, as well because uh, looking at a topic when when I talk to other artists who do movie posters and they like to do um, I mean they have done an uh, anime uh, movie posters and they have done um, also uh, other works where they included architecture where they like do like cityscapes for example this is also animated but batman the animated series a friend of mine raid 71 he did a uh, batman the animated show and he made basi- basically as it is in a show gotham a character and created a lot of the city and, and drew all of that and that's also really interesting to see and i and i have like a i have a flat file here next to me um and i have one um one draw that is only architecture prints and I'm mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm also a big Frank Lloyd Wright fan, and that's that's why I have like in the living room there's like a corner for only Frank Lloyd Wright prints, and then there are pr- probably like twenty more in in the drawer. <laughs> so that's uh, yeah, that's some really cool stuff, and really uh, to enjoy that. And um, you can see a little bit here. It's like behind the figures, but behind there is a Pablo Oliveira print for uh, Blade Runner twenty forty nine, and he also <laughs> draws a lot of architecture uh, scenes in his. Um, very uh, portray uh, um, posters here, uh, landscape posters. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, they, they turned out really great. And I, I love that just the the art behind it, but also the um, the feeling of it, that it, it, it is um, 
going away a little bit from the pop culture, but not too much. So that's the right amount for me personally to enjoy this um, as or, or other people who are not into pop culture can enjoy it as well. And I think that's a really good combination. And I think the book brings that very well uh, across and shows these beautiful um, hand-drawn paintings and ideas where this all come from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the whole focus of this book is that we try to or mainly show scenes and pictures where the the shot is often background only. Mm -hmm. So you don't have much characters in front. Of course, there are exceptions to this rule. Yeah. But um, yeah, really the sequences where the where the background is the main protagonist mm. because that's when the art artists can excel no yeah they have enough time and resources to really go into depth and yeah so you get the the finest art from these sequences mm. and especially mm. uh, as well as, as you said i mean you talked about the world building and i think seeing the world and Making it making it a believable world is uh, the artistry that these people um, do here, and I think this works very well. And this is why we love these movies so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was an interesting uh, moment when we were putting up the exhibition mm -hmm. just now. That one of the guys who was hanging the pictures on the wall, mm -hmm. he said, "Oh, with each frame I'm putting up, I can hear the music." Awesome. Of the of Akira, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the backgrounds they the memory they evoke is the space of the movie. And in this space you hear the sound. Mm. So it's really um like Oshi, the director of Ghost in the Shell and other important movies, he said once that it's really the backgrounds where the director expresses his vision of the world mm -hmm. the story is basically just a hook line to get people into this world and it's the background art where the vision is expressed yeah you know, the, like uh, philosophical or spiritual ideas yeah yeah and you 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 get the sense of uh why things are uh, why characters do things like that and why they are in this world like the interconnect interconnectedness of the, the background or the the world in that case to the characters makes uh, total sense there and uh, this is it's just incredible I, I i love that you've done this book and uh, that there's an exhibition even in berlin because this is for for the art world the pop culture art world where i'm coming from there's not much going on for for berlin and having this uh, <laughs> yeah. makes it definitely worthwhile yeah it's really uh to me it's still also a bit of a miracle to have this this exhibition in Berlin, yeah. because Berlin, pop culturally wise, is basically off the map. No? Yeah, there it's is... kind of sad. I don't know but... why. I don't know <laughs> yeah, why. It's really strange. Yeah. Uh, since, since in the art world, fine yeah. art world, Berlin is big. Exactly. But in the pop culture world, Berlin is really very, very small. Yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't make sense. But anyways, um, yeah. Do, do you have a favorite from um, the backgrounds? Is there something that you really, really uh, enjoy so much and or what's what's the one original that you put up yourself <laughs> well i I'm, I'm putting up all of them oh lucky you <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, original you mean yeah do you have one yeah i have one original from from pet labor okay um but uh, these are the originals or the these drawings we have here in the book mm -hmm are impossible to okay. to have okay 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 so that's the whole point why we are making these exclusive prints yeah because um even if you had a million dollars it would be hard to get any of these drawings all right, right. they are um, the reason is that it's quite difficult to understand who you should pay mm-hmm there is the artwork on paper, but the more difficult thing is the rights issue. Yeah. And as long as the artists and the studios are alive, I doubt that there is a like official way to acquire these drawings. Yeah. So, but 
but that seems very loyal in terms of like the studios uh, towards the artist. And I think that's that's something the um, maybe the West, I would say, should look at as well. And like, um, because I know, for example, when it comes to the movie poster world, there are, I don't know, Sony does, for example, I think they did for the Northman, they did it like, a, like a, it's called a, a talent house or something like that. Does like these poster content, uh, 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 competitions. So you can basically uh, send in your final poster for the Northman and then maybe it gets picked and you get a little bit of money and but they get all the exposure and the, all the other artists who don't get picked, they get nothing basically. And I think this is this is not how it's supposed to be. And studios should pay for artists who do the art and uh, recognize the artists. And I think Disney is doing this more and more, uh, especially when it comes, for example, to the poster posse, because they're doing projects uh, with, with Disney and Disney Plus and doing like episodes, uh, single episodes for them. And I think that's that's the way to go. And um, yeah, the West needs to do that more and recognize the artist and the artistry behind it. But when it comes to movie posters, for when you look at Drew Struzan's uh, um, recognition um, back in the day and uh, yeah, nowadays they don't have that. We just get floating heads and it's done, be done with it. And uh, yeah, and this is this is very sad to see. And I love uh, the things you're telling here that the studio is so loyal and don't um, uh, or doesn't give away the, the the originals or sells them because they could make a lot of money from that, obviously, and uh, from the collectors. And yeah, but yeah, that's great. Yeah, the it's about the loyalty of the studios and the artists, like vice versa. Mm -hmm. But it's also in Japan or in the it's in any movie industry these ties between studios and artists it's really a network mm -hmm. like everybody is basically working with everybody mm -hmm. more or less because you need to help each other so the scene is quite small in fact mm -hmm. like the core scene and it's a system in which many people know what you're doing mm -hmm. Like, so they care about each other and they know that somewhere here in our net, in our base in Tokyo, we have all these things and we take care of it. Mm. Um, so it wouldn't be regarded well in terms of, yeah. you know, loyalty yeah. if the, somebody the sold everything. Yeah. 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 Um, so that's, you yeah. know. Okay. Um, do you have a favorite moment that you have uh, like met a certain um, artist or uh, went to a studio and had a certain meeting or something like that? Was, was there something that really stood out over your career? Because you probably had multiple great meetings, I guess. But uh, let us into the uh, you know, on the inside here a little bit. What 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 yeah. will happen here? So I still still think one of the <clears throat> the most touching and like really changing moments in my career was when Hiro Masaogua, you're just showing his picture here, mm -hmm. the art director of Ghost in the Shell. He came to our first exhibition in Berlin, which was held in 2010. Mm -hmm. And he was before that, like we started working with him in 2007. Mm -hmm. So it took us quite a long time to convince him that we want to present his sketches and artwork, which is not kept in a good condition. No? Mm -hmm. it's, it's quite dirty. It's quite messy. That we want to present these things on the wall of a museum. Because he always said, first, this is not my work. My work is based on the work of many others. No, the painting I do is based on a line work by another artist, mm. which is based on a photograph by another artist. So I'm not the only author of this piece. And the artwork really is the movie. It's not my work. Mm -hmm. you know, we all do it together. So I don't have a good feeling showing my pieces on the wall. Yeah. You know, what does it mean? It's a very sincere and solid response to my request, and it's quite hard to answer. It, the only uh, way to answer it was basically to show how it was created, to show the whole process. 
like to show all these sketches that mm -hmm. were necessary to create the final piece. And we did this and we put it up on the wall, the like damaged pieces. Yeah. And so he came to the opening and he stood in front of this installation and he told me, Stefan, I understand now it works. Mm. We can we can look at my work on the wall. I haven't thought of it so far. So that was really, you know, it was really mind blowing for me because um, with my work, I could change a bit how he perceived of his own work. Yeah, that's really for a curator. That's the best you can achieve, you know, to work with an artist so close that he understands a new aspect of his own piece. That's really a great honor. And from there, I understood, OK, that's the way, you know, yeah, that's, like the Mandalorian says, it, this is the way. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, that's a very, <laughs> very wholesome story. I love that. Love to hear yeah. that story. This is this is amazing. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I, I got goosebumps hearing that. So that's uh, that's amazing yeah that's yeah amazing. i got them too yeah <laughs> uh, that's really great yeah so yeah that was like the turning point no then i understood okay we can we can go much further with this project awesome so um what is uh, what, what's the future gonna hold for you let's talk about that <laughs> yeah i don't know um at the moment i'm just busy uh like fulfilling prints and things and like you know packing parcels and mm. caring about the quality of all everything i'm not really in the position to produce new things at the moment but yeah i want to work closer with the artists mm. i think that it would be nice to have monographic books yeah. in english yeah. about these art directors like whole biography yeah, like yeah, portraits like yeah, portraits and, you know, show what they done in their life in a solid book. Mm. So, yeah, I just don't know who wants to buy it. You know, I would yeah. like I would I know, like I to have feeling. such a book, <laughs> but I, I don't know if it's possible to do it. Yeah, but I mean, with that, the... but but that's my wish Yeah, to produce like a library of the art director's work. Mm -hmm. as a reference material for artists working today because I understand or I heard now that the book I just did anime architecture mm -hmm. it's useful for artists yeah, yeah that's I didn't imagine yeah. this before you know I didn't make it for artists but most of the people who buy it are artists themselves exactly uh, that's, <laughs> so, that's yeah, that's how i got to really as i said that's how i got to know this uh, matt griffin was the artist and he had the book and he takes reference from this book and i yeah, exactly. when i showed it on the podcast and i talked about it um we had other other people uh, ask for the book and they they, they said oh i got the book uh, because uh uh, Matt Griffin and, and Tom said it and so it's amazing thank you for the recommendation and stuff like that so yeah they this they got people really exp uh, inspired especially in, in in the world where I'm come from so it's really great yeah yeah so that's really great and that would be the best for me you know to like bridge the Japanese guys mm -hmm. with the guys working today because also the people I'm working with are old no we yeah. need to kind of preserve the work and if I could make a library of their way of working, mm -hmm. no, because everybody's working differently, mm -hmm. I think that would be a really useful resource. And I would enjoy doing this. So, yeah, I just need to find a way to you know, build I, the project and find the time and resources to make I it. I can tell you yeah. from the podcast, because this is what I try to do, like see, like, like have a glimpse into the life of the people I interview. And then um, the the artist, uh, like, oh, there's a lot of artists who actually watch it, not only the collectors, but a lot of artists, and they get inspired by how other people work and how they schedule their life, how their workspace looks like and things like that. And um, yeah, this is basically the same what you're doing. So there's definitely, I tell you, there's a def definite market for that. So um, yeah, we just we just have to get, get the people to notice. And I think this, <laughs> this is a good start. 
and uh, yes that's a very good start thank you for this yeah my my pleasure i mean yeah. I, I i i love the idea behind the book it's it's a really great one and i love um the the passion you bring bring with this this is basically <laughs> We're kind of the same here, uh, because I bring passion for the for the poster scene a lot, and 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 also this, and then you have the passion, like the, the even the deeper knowledge behind it, and that's really great uh, that I had the chance to talk to you here. Yeah, that's likewise. Yeah, that's a really good encounter. Alrighty, um, then um, again, as we said earlier, this uh, the the exhibition is in Berlin until September fourth, so you still have some time to uh, look at some great art if you're in Berlin. Um, if not, uh, you can check out some of the prints online. Um, I put uh, Stefan's uh, Instagram here, Rikes Galerie. You find it, Rikes Galerie. You find it there, and uh, you can go there and see, check that all out. And you can also go on the web. What's the web page again, Stefan? Rikeles.com. Uh, Rikeles.com. Yeah, you can go there, and then you can grab the prints. And we have a little special for you because with this interview, yeah. we have a little discount code. It's called Drop Twenty, and uh, with all capital letters, and you get a twenty percent discount for your next order. So, people, this is your chance. Go grab them because these are some beautiful pieces, and I know a couple of you already wrote me because I. Uh, posted about it and uh, yeah you're interested in that and I think this is a good chance so Stefan thank you again for doing this giving us the discount code and uh, also talking about this beautiful book and uh, the artwork and uh, yeah if you cannot attend obviously the exhibition grow, uh, go grab the book anime architecture it is by Thames and Hudson released so um, this is uh, I think this is British as well right they, they should have it uh, over there yeah yeah and yeah, yeah they have it Okay. Perfect. So, thank you very much, Tom. Yeah. Be before yeah. you go, this you, uh, I want to give you the chance to uh, shout out people, uh, artists, uh, friends, whoever you want to shout out, and uh, yeah, I'll plug whatever you want to plug. This is your space. You're you have. There's no Oscar time. I'm not going to pull you from the stage. So uh, go ahead and you can uh, shout out and plug whatever you want. Yeah. So the first one goes to Hiroko Miyokam. He she's my colleague working in Japan and like my long arm <laughs> to to the scene in Tokyo and without her this whole project wouldn't be possible. Azo Workshop is her home. She's an amazing curator herself. Yeah, we're gonna put and, her Instagram uh, yeah, we'll down. put her Instagram here. Yeah. And then of course to the Choban Foundation who is hosting now this great exhibition. Uh, a big thanks to them because, you know, when we uh, I approached them three years ago, we had nothing. Mm -hmm. We had this idea and I knew that there were these drawings somewhere, but we didn't have an idea how to bring it here. We did no OK from Otomo. We had, you know, nothing. It was really an adventure and I'm very grateful they went this long way with me. And then, of course, to all the artists involved, especially now for the exhibition, like Mizutani and Ono and the master Otomo Katsuhiro, who approved of everything and gave us his consent that we can actually do this. It's really a big honor. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much. All righty. Stefan, again, thank you for stopping by. It's been such a pleasure. And you people, uh, go over to Rikalis.com uh, and get your prints and uh, because they are amazing i can tell you that and uh, yeah this is this is passion this is a labor of love and uh yeah <laughs> we <laughs> we uh get you all the stuff you need out there and uh, yeah i hope you enjoyed the interview and talk to you guys soon bye 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 thank you